Welcome back to EASD TV. My name is Vivian Parry and I'm with you to discuss some of the most pressing issues in diabetes today. Now, one of the things that we thought we'd do for you this year is to do a series of talks and discussions about the future. And one of the areas is bariatric surgery. And why we're interested in that is how is it affected by the new range of drugs that promise considerable weight loss. So with me, and I'm delighted to welcome him, him is Professor Carol LaRue from University College Dublin, who is a professor of metabolic medicine. And weight loss has always been your particular area, hasn't it? Principally bariatric surgery. That's correct, because we now understand that obesity is a disease, and for so long we didn't understand that, and hence we were chasing weight loss, as you say, but now our objectives have changed to actually treat the disease of obesity, and weight loss follows naturally. Now, when you started on the bariatric surgery part of your career, there weren't these amazing drugs promising 25% weight loss. How has that changed the picture and where are we going in the future with it? The new drugs is probably the best thing that could ever have happened to bariatric surgery because for so long surgery was the only treatment that could provide 25% weight loss and we've known that for the last 50 years. So if you had a Roux-en-Y gastric bypass 50 years ago, you would have lost exactly the same amount of weight that you would have lost today. But what has changed is just how safe the surgeons have made it. Today, if you have a bariatric surgical procedure, your chances of dying is less than one in a thousand. And of course, what we now know is if you do not have bariatric surgery, especially if you have type 2 diabetes, your risk of dying is higher than if you had surgery. So I think the safety of surgery has changed the landscape. But people will look at the drugs and they'll think that must be safer and it must be cheaper. Is that true? Well, what we understand from the drugs is that they and, are... And I'm, I'm just going to say, we do have quite a lot of drilling still going on. So if you hear strange noises, just try and ignore them. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. The new drugs are phenomenal. Um, we now think that we're going to have the same amount of weight loss with the medication that we have with bariatric surgery. But what you need to recognise is that currently, worldwide, fewer than 1% of people who are eligible for type 2, well, eligible for surgery that have type 2 diabetes are not are getting it at the moment. So let me rephrase that. So only 1% of people people who are eligible for surgery today with type 2 diabetes is having the operations. So that means there's 99% of people that may be eligible for medications and should be considered for medications. Of course we know not everybody would like to have medications, but we hope that it will really increase the penetrance for the treatment of obesity, especially in people with type 2 diabetes. Is that the end of bariatric surgery? No, in fact, I think it's the beginning. Because what we see with these drugs is that on average we get 25% weight loss. That may mean that a quarter of people may lose more than a third of their body weight. But it also means that maybe 10% of people, 20% of people maybe with type 2 diabetes, will lose less than 10% of their body weight. So imagine you're somebody that's starting on a journey, a pathway of treatment, for the disease of obesity with your type 2 diabetes and you don't respond. Where do you go now? And I think what we're going to see is more people are going to convert going from medications when they don't respond to surgical treatments. Because let's be clear, it is not the smart people who listen to me that respond and the people that don't listen that don't respond. It really is biology. Um, and hence that is changing the stigma of the disease. But if the biology means that you don't lose weight with the drugs, surely that same biology must be present and mean that you don't lose weight with the surgery either. We really did think that and we were very concerned, but now the new data is coming out, surprisingly. So people who do not respond to bariatric surgery still respond to the medications. And it also appears that people that don't respond to the medications respond to surgery. That's probably because the mechanisms of actions are slightly different. Um, and that's very good news for our patients because it means even when we do bariatric surgery, and again, there's 10 to 20% of people who don't respond, 
respond. We now add these medications and they have an even exaggerated response. So what we are seeing is that it's no longer surgery against medicine. We're now talking about surgery with medicine in the same way as we would do with many other chronic diseases. Now, if I'm a policymaker, mm. and there will be policymakers worldwide looking right. at this very, very closely, I would immediately assume that surgery is the expensive option, and of course hospital beds are very precious resources, and drugs are the cheap and easy option. Is that true? I think that will be true in 2035. But in 2023, what we see is surgery is one of the very few treatments we have that is dominant in a health economic model. What that means is if you spend 10,000 euros buying an operation, you will make your money back. So if you actually treat patients with medication, it will cost approximately 20,000 euro per one quality adjusted life year. So the surgery is actually the much cheaper option and more effective, but we shouldn't force people to have surgery if they don't want to have surgery, but equally we shouldn't stop people to have surgery when they want it. We have multiple options, we can have patient choice, and I think that's the way forward. But there will be a crossover point, a price point, mm. at which the economics become very different, presumably. I think you are right. Um, but what we also are starting to see is some patients who are using the medications who are very um, successful and maybe lose 20% of their body weight with the medication come back to us and say, you know, the medication is really good, but there's a burden of taking medication even every week. Even if we have an oral medication, taking a medication every day, is there a solution that I may have that may reduce my medication burden? Because remember, our patients with type 2 diabetes are correctly taking a large number of drugs that make them live longer. But that in itself have a burden. Um, so surgery can reduce that burden. And I think that will also drive some patients towards surgery. Now, in this series, I'm going to ask each of our uh, contributors to give me their predictions for the future. So, Professor LaRue, and by the way, have you noticed the nominative determinism <laughs> of why on Rue operations with the name Rue, he becomes exactly <laughs> interested in that thing. Anyway, uh, okay, 2023, yeah. where do you see us at the end of this decade, first of all? I think we're going to be able to disrupt the disease of type 2 diabetes and we're going to do that by treating the disease of obesity effectively. We will have nutritional therapies, pharmacotherapies and surgical therapies. But we're going to start far earlier, we're going to stop blaming our patients for having the disease of obesity, but we're going to effectively treat it. Okay, now I'm going to take you to 2035. Mm. What are we going to see then? Are we going to see, for instance, widespread preventive treatment at a much earlier stage? I think it must be possible to prevent the disease of obesity and therefore also prevent a large number of the diseases of type 2 diabetes. We're just not smart enough. And what we've seen in the last five years, the phenomenal increase in knowledge regarding treating the disease of obesity has outstripped our ability to understand how to prevent the disease. I think what we're doing at the moment is the best we can do in a crooked world, but I think we will understand the diseases much better and be much better at preventing it. But today we should not compete. It's not either or. It's not prevention or treatment. We should do both. We should treat people that have the disease of obesity, especially if they have type 2 diabetes, but we should also work much harder at preventing obesity and preventing the development of type 2 diabetes in people that have obesity. Absolutely fascinating. Well, there you have it. A glimpse to the future, bariatric surgery, weight loss drugs, prevention. It's fascinating. Come back to us soon. We're looking forward to be with you.